work on the vanity. Uh, I have the vanity over here prior to coming on this evening. I did um, put some more paint on the top of that vanity, which we didn't get to do in our phone is doing its crazy little thing about connection availability. So we may be having some internet issues. You guys know we're here in Kernersville, North Carolina, where we are getting some snow today. So um, really a first little of accumulation for the first time here. So um, that may interfere. Sometimes it makes our broadcast maybe a little better because it's kind of holding the airwaves down and we have a better connection. But I did see that little uh, window pop up. So uh, it may be tonight. So um, if you're joining me again, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Kimberly. If you're new here to our uh, page, I am with um, Unique uh, Finds and Designs Furniture and Decor. Mostly um, I'm doing, I did change our name a little bit to tweak it to more what we're doing unique finds and furniture designs because that's what we really do here um, it's the art of furniture design I'm a furniture um, paint artist I feature Dixie Bell chalk paint products they are the top chalk paint uh, company in the US at this time so um, I'm proud to be a part of their um, group of retailers and um, we have one products and this is more of a tips and tricks and help kind of show you guys and guide you guys along the way if you are upscale uh, any of your furniture then um, chalk paint is a really fast fun way to enhance a product that you already have in your home so you can upscale it and modernize it to today's um, to today's modern taste buds and um, with chalk paint you can really touch all facets of design whether you are a farmhouse uh, tree chic cottage chic uh, shabby chic if you're a whimsical furniture art lover I mean we do we can do all avenues and all aspects of your designs and desires through our chalk paint. So it's a wonderful product, a great fun um, way to embellish and, and, and upscale furniture that you already have or some way you know may have. So um, if you're interested in being a part of a workshop, we have two workshops out now. We have one actually coming up this weekend. I have Miss Samantha at Habitat for Humanity Kernersville Restore as to how many seats we have available but we do have that going on this weekend from two to four it's a beginner bring your own piece of class so you know go in there grab something out of the kitchen or out of the hallway something and wanting to just kind of jump in and get your feet wet and get to know a chalk painting just bring it on down. We'll be over there. We'll be we'll be getting um, together with a group of people, and we will be just kind of hammering out some pieces. We also have that three-day boot camp coming up. That is an all-inclusive in, in, boot camp. Okay, this is not your average just uh, beginner class. This is an advanced intermediate class. This is a class where we will be touching on all aspects of Dixie Bell chalk paint as well as all the products that help embellish them and you guys if you guys are followers of mine you can see some of the posts that I have put out some whimsical furniture some um, primitive transfers which you see behind me here which are curing because it's been cold here so I keep them I let them cure I let them get good and tenacious before I put them out to the general public so um, if you want to learn how to do some uh, some crackle some would you be in some embellishments with the transfers we would with the glazes and the waxes we're going to be hitting it all in that three-day boot camp it's it i couldn't go over everything we're going to go through on that boot camp 
but we are going to bring a piece in and we're going to bring it from completion from something like this that's just weathered and um, needing to be upscaled to a finished when we are done this is not just kind of get your feet wet with the beginner class this is an intermediate class you're going to be learning lots of tips and tricks and techniques that i use to get the products and the uh, desired look that i want but tonight we're just going to come in here and i'm going to get some more paint on my pieces it is cold you do hear a heater running in here i do like to warm up my now the temperature outside here in North Carolina is probably in the 30s and so it's not that much warmer in my workspace it's probably 50s and my paint I have had so my temperature of my paint is room temperature so it is warm and I do run a heater to heat my products before I start painting so um, that's the way I can still have good results with a cold environment so um, I run the heater here after I'm done painting for a little bit and then I'll cut it off and then it'll cure up and so as um, as it goes on so tonight I'm continuing on with the painting that I had done on our vanity if you are here with me let me know I don't see I can see people are here but I can't I'm not communicating with them because I don't see you guys make some comments let me know you're here what do you want to see how can i help you um, also you can go to our youtube channel we do have videos out there that are loaded and ready for you guys to view so um jump on our youtube channel and you will be able to um, see some past previous and and so forth going on in our video collection over there so we do have a video playlist and it is there to use and um, also help you get a, your desired looks on different pieces. So um, I'm just going to get started here. I did, however, clean this piece. Always back to the basics there. We did clean the piece. We cleaned it really well. Then I come in here and I bossed it. I did put boss on this just like I did the vanity because we do not want through. I'm going on with some light colored paint here and when I go over it with the light colored paint I don't want my ball, this particular stain piece to bleed back through my paint so in order to keep that from happening I lost it so that's what the boss is for no you do not need slick stick and boss on the same piece most of the time if you're using slick stick it's not to stop a bleed through if you have a bleed through issue you want to use the boss and I did use clear balls. Now I am coming in here. You guys know I've told you before you will sometimes go and paint a piece and then you'll decide that, oh, I don't want to. Always give yourself the option to go away and come back the next day to decide whether or not you like that, that color. Um, dampen my brush as well, guys. Um, I always keep a nice damp brush when I start. So I did start with a damp brush because I did paint a little bit on the vanity before we came onto this broadcast. So um, I am coming in here. I did. I changed my tone, my paint, as I told you guys on Tuesday night that I believed I would, and I did. So I changed it, and I am actually using the sea glass, which was my choice of color from the beginning. However didn't have it so I went with what I had the nice thing about I had when I put my sea glass on and then I decide to dress then I'm gonna have some of that other color kind of peeking out of that distressed so it's kind of a way to give you more of a dimensional look if that's what you're going for so um, you can play with it tweak it out make it what you want it to be and and tonight that's I just went ahead and um, continued with the color I had on that piece, which was the Dixie Belle Blue. If you remember, I put Dixie Belle Blue on it, and when I put the Dixie Belle Blue on, I did mix some of our fluff color. It was the white. I call it a farmhouse white in with our um, Dixie Belle Blue. Now, you notice I did not take my mirror. I'm not concerned with taping off my mirror. Uh, it's just a bunch of extra work for me that I don't need. 
So I will come in with a blazer blade and just come in and just kind of clean that back up after I'm done. So mostly I'm concerned that I don't want to get paint on this piece behind me. So I'm going to be careful not to splash on it behind me because it's sitting over here. It's doing its thing, getting cured. In those workshops that we'll be bringing up, are going to boot camp we are going to be doing some um what do i want to say wood grain on some of our pieces we're going to show you how to put wood grain on a piece that's not even necessarily wood grain like the piece behind me this is wood grain that i have done with paint now i use paint to create that wood grain we use two different colors and i will be going over those techniques in that three camp as well so um if you're wondering what Going on in that boot camp, we're gonna be working. We're gonna be hitting on all the different products and all the different styles and dimensions of our Dixie Bell products. So if you're interested in getting in on that, it is next month. You got plenty of time to um, plan for it. So I'm just gonna continue here. I'm gonna get my Sea glass is what I'm using tonight. And like I say, I'm being a little bit more careful than I normally do just because I'm awfully close to this piece. Most likely, I'm going to come in here and give this a, a uh, what do I say, a distressed look. But I'm going to get my paint on first. I'm also going to be going over some dry brush techniques in those workshops. So you guys will be able to experience that as well. And I may use that technique on this vanity as we go along. So um, I'm, I'm envisioning it being, that's why I clean them and kind of get to know my piece real well. That's when I get my vision pretty much for the piece. I try to think about the era of the piece. And I just kind of try to get a vision um, going in my head with what I want to do with it and where I want to go with it. So I'm medium brush right now and um, that's what I'm placing my paint on with and I'm just kind of you know I try to stay with the grain but of course you know you're following the mirror the frame of the mirror so you can just see how um, a little bit of chalk paint just kind of brings this whole mirror sort of come to life because it's so dark and dreary looking and with a little coat of paint, it hides a multitude of sins on these old pieces. So you'll, um, you'll certainly enjoy once you get started. The biggest, as I tell everybody, when we are beginning our chalk paint classes, I always tell everyone the hardest part of painting with chalk paint is really just choosing your color. There's nothing hard, um, in my opinion, about getting out here and getting it done. It's just jumping in the boat and doing it for the first time. It's not that complicated. It's definitely fun. In fact, it's even a little addicting. <laughs> you might want, <coughs> excuse me, you, <coughs> you might get in there and um, sky will be the limit once you start painting. You'll just really understand how much to see something of vintage just kind of come back to life after all these years that it's put in. And um, that's my favorite part in the before and after of where these pieces have been kind of tossed to the side. They've been given away or whatever the case may be where they have found themselves in a place like the, the Habitat for Humanity Restore or they found themselves at a Goodwill, an auction, or, um, you know, there's so many places to find these pieces. And um, it breaks my heart to some extent to see them just kind of falling off by the wayside. And so I love to upscale and repurpose and revive these sweet pieces 
It's, it's just so much fun to see them and see some of the customers and how they are so overjoyed with how you can take something that just looks so I, I don't abandoned, if you will. That's kind of a good word. They they just look so abandoned, and they just come back to such beautiful again when you paint them. Just gives them a whole new dimension. So if you are here and you are with me, let me know you're here. We thank you for joining us yet again on a or another adventure um, in painting with uh, Dixie Bell chalk paint. We are here every Tuesday, Thursday, and uh, we are always bringing old and upscaling it into something new in these in these little broadcasts. So again, we we thank you for your following us and being a part of what we do. And let me make sure I am not going to get a bunch of paint on this piece behind me. Because I will not like that at all. Just making sure that that is not reaching my piece. Now, if you were painting and you felt like it did reach your piece, you know what the magic thing is. And let me see if I can find them. They're the baby wipes. So I'm out of your view. I'm gonna put you up here, maybe. I don't know if my machine will go back that way. I don't think it will. So I'm gonna grab my baby wipes. These are, you just cannot live without them. I'm gonna make sure on my piece behind me that there is nothing against. I did put a top coat on it. So let me just kinda Pull this up a little bit so you guys can kind of see what I'm working with. And I'll make sure I'm going to double check on my piece back here because this is um, sitting back here curing. And I just want to make sure I didn't flick any of my paint on it. I try not to be a sloppy painter, but sometimes I get busy and I'm tired. I want to make sure that that's not what I'm seeing on my foot, my piece back here. I have to keep my glasses on so I can see. I do not want any specks on this piece back here. So that's why I use to keep my baby wipes around. You never ever know. And I'm just talking away, and I sure don't want to mess up my piece behind me, or that piece right there. So let me pull that and make sure. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you, girl? Yes, I'm out in, in North Carolina freezing. I got a little heater running here. But um, I got some people with me tonight, but nobody's saying hello except for you, girl. So I appreciate that. I'm gonna come back here because I do not want to paint that piece that we were just talking about. I'm behind my mirror. I saw your little girl had a ceremony or something going on with school. I know you are one proud mama. I don't blame you. So I am kind of getting a little paint back there. It's kind of hard because this is a trifold mirror and it sits on this little vein. And it's a little hard to hold up. Maybe I can sit this behind me here. I just do not wish to get anything on my piece behind me there. So how are you doing? Oh, thank you. I don't know if you can see the vanity. Maybe you can see it in the mirror. It's behind me. I'm always, I love vanities. I really, really, really love the old the antique vanities for some reason. And I am out in my garage. 
This is kind of my little paint studio, if you will. If you want to call it that. Hey, we make it what it is, right? We use what we got, and we'll be glad about it. I got a little tiny heater in here running that I'm using. And I got some painted pieces behind me that I don't necessarily want to get messed up. I shorted it. I about splattered on it. Busy painting and not thinking about it. Did you get some snow where you are? I don't know. I know most everybody. A lot of it coming up from the... What was it coming from? The east? Southeast maybe? Yeah. I think it was coming from the southeast. the vintage mirror that's in as good as condition as this one is it's it's uh, actually not mint it's not golf it's actually sea glass hon it's one of my favorite colors no south alabama we never get snow never get snow huh my daughter loves it and she tells me wally you don't mind if i move to where it's always snowing do you so I know we got some viewers here with us, but I can't see them because um, we get people on, but um, nobody wants to conversate. I know it's cold out there, so I know that this is a good night to be out doing something besides waiting for the snow to go. I mean, a lot of kids got out of school early here, so we got a light snow. We didn't get anything, you know, obtrusive or anything, but fun. My little girl, she's just all about it. She's like, do you mind if I move to Iceland? I'm like, um, I might. That's kind of okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's kind of funny. She loves the snow. So, um, oh, now you see. Yes, I'm sorry. I am using a Dixie Belle Sea Glass. This is one of my favorite colors. I actually think they painted their walls in their new facility if you will, in this color, didn't they? I'm pretty sure. But I love the mint. I love using the mint, too, and also the golf. And obviously with the waxes, you know, kind of, I kind of like to tone them down depending on what I'm doing. So um, I did boss this, too, because it's so old. I did boss it so that it wouldn't bleed through. And then I painted the vanity. And I'm going to kind of move one out of the way and... 70 degrees yes my daughter my daughter in florida she I her today and we were talking and she said it was i want to think she said 89 89 degrees in florida she's sitting we're on facetime and i'm sitting here i've got i'm out in the snow you know it's just started snow we took care of all the chickens and all the animals and she's she, I FaceTimed her. I'm all bundled up, wearing a hood, you know, the toboggan and the gloves and the big old heavy jacket. And she's sitting there in a swimming suit, tank, the swimming top. And I'm like, really? <laughs> she's like, well, it's so hot, you know. And she's got a beautiful tan sitting there in, in her tank top, in her, I mean, in her swimsuit. And I'm like, really? <laughs> How is that possible? Freezing to death, you know. <laughs> So, or I'm freezing to death, but you know, that's because I'm not really from North Carolina. So I guess when it gets cold, I see it differently than a lot of other people do. They're like, oh, this is nothing. And I'm like frozen. But you might take the girl out of Florida, but you can't ever take the, the Florida out of her. So, especially when it comes to the cold weather. So I'm just going to move this little baby back over here. Kind of move her out of my way. Up against my door there. Grab my stuff. And kind of move along to another thing. Oh, you think you're cracking up. You think that's funny. Yeah, I don't know. I like it. If it's, I'm, I'm kind of got the attitude since I've been here. I've been here a while. I mean, since two that I've been in North Carolina. So 
I should be used to it, but really, I don't think demographically my body adjusted to it, even as long as I've been here. So, um, so I'm going to switch the vanity around now and show you guys what we're doing to it, since we did get a coat on the that. And like I say, um, sometimes I like to come in and dry brush and add a little little pizzazz to that. We'll see as we go along, because you guys know I always try to keep you informed. So let me twist this around. So obviously I'm going to be out of your view a sec. And pull this guy around. And then we can move our camera. And sorry for the mess here. But I know I bobbled you all over the place. So now you can see, sorry, I got a So now you can see the rest of what we're doing here. So I did come in here the other night though and painted this little vanity and I see we're still a little off here. So this is what we're kind of working on. So she is complete with all of my sea glass on her because I did come in here and I blended a couple of colors. I'm keeping moving you guys around here so you guys can kind of see a little bit better. So I finally got a little tripod here to kind of help me along. So I did add some would you bend to this piece. So that's what you're seeing. These embellishments were not originally to the piece. And I did come in here and I'll talk about and I'm going to grab another brush and I'm not particularly happy with using um, a different brush other than this one. I have misplaced I may have it some here somewhere, but I've misplaced one of my other brushes. Most likely it's inside because I've moved stuff inside because it's so chilly. Um, but this is the fluff on here. So I am toning this color down as well. I did put it on here. I did put the boss on it. You guys that have been kind of following us know that the top of this piece. So I did come in here. I did sand them. I don't necessarily always have to. Normally I clean it really well and then bossed it. That's the things that I did before we got to here. And you watch that video from Tuesday. That's how we got here. And this is really uh, fluff. But I am going to tone this color down personally. I feel like it's a little bit brighter than I want. A vintage more. I'm going for more of a vintage um, shabby chic feel with this piece because, like I say, when I get to cleaning them, I kind of get a kind of get an idea of where I want to go with this piece. So this is going to be beautiful sitting back up on here and working on the here for it as well. So um, while I was doing it, I do see there's a couple of places right here. You can see right here. Um, that's how you get to know your piece. There's a little bit of the piece coming coming loose here. It's a quick, easy fix. All I'm going to do is get up under there with some of our Gorilla wood glue, and I'm going to put it all up in there, and I'm going to clamp it back in place. It'll be good to go. You won't have to worry about it. And where else did I notice? I know it's right under here is there's a piece that's doing the exact same thing. Easy fix. That's exactly what you do to it. You just put your um, Gorilla Glue up on there, clamp it down, let her sit, let her dry, you're good to go. These are not structural issues at all. They're just kind of aesthetically um, distressing to your eye, if you will. So, um, Let's see, you have to get the family time with kiddos. Yes, girl, you do what you need to do. Thanks so much. Great to see, uh, see you on here, and um, we will chat later. Great time for family time. So um, the rest of you guys, we are actually going to, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come in now and tone down the white. Now, it, when I go to distress this, um, some of this is going to show through some of the white when I distress. So it will give it kind of more of a, a more of a dimensional look when you do that. So it will kind of add a little more character to your piece. And, um, and then as I continue on, I will be doing some um, aesthetics in between here. I will be distressing in here as well. 
so that will help pull and give it added dimension as we go along so now we're just kind of getting the paint on here and giving us an idea of where we want to go with that and the light is kind of bright so let me just kind of bring you in so you can kind of see the top you can see it is wet you're what tell me again oh my daughter's <laughs> my daughter's gonna bring our <coughs> excuse me our dog in so that's what is on the top that is the fluff that's the farmhouse fluff i call it a farmhouse white and um, but I am going to come in here and I'm toning it down and the color that I have here I have it in a little container because guess what I had some sitting in the workshop and it got a little thick on me so I salvaged what I could out of it but it's enough for me to go over the top of these drawers and it's going to take down that strong stark white look and give it more of a creamy vintage look. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So I just wanna let you guys know that's what you're gonna be seeing me put on. And um, I'm not fond of this brush here, but maybe I can make it work. So I have a couple of chip brushes here. Um, most of the time I use my oval medium brush, but now you guys know I've got it dirty. So it's gonna have to sit aside and try to had any of my better brushes out. Not that I'm seeing. They're all indoors. So what I'm going to do is find one of our chip brushes a little bit. It's not too bad. The difference with your brushes is going to leave a little more brush strokes than your finer um, brushes that we have. And I am going to dampen my brush because you always start with a damp brush. That will help. And here she comes. Y'all say hello to the Mally. I call her the Mally from the alley. My daughter's Malinois. So another thing you have to remember when you're working with um, Dixie Belle chalk paint. It is a self-leveling paint. So that helps a tremendous amount. And you can see how, hello, Sorry guys, <laughs> you can see how that's, all right, go on, go on. Uh, uh, uh. She's gonna have paint all over her, call her back please. Sorry guys, I'm gonna have a painted Malinois. Just block her off there and she won't get in my stuff. So you guys here and this is why some of the chip brushes do. But you can get by with the chip brush. I don't know, maybe you guys can see that on here. Fine. She loves her mama. She, she has separation anxiety like through the roof, you guys. Don't let people kid you about a Belgian Malinois. Let me just tell you, they are the greatest dogs. Now they're a good protection dog too, I get that. But all that hoopla about the Malligator and all this monkey mess, I don't know. We have one, she's one of the best dogs we've ever had and the smartest dogs we've ever had. So I'm using a chip brush and you can see here how easily, hey girl, what you doing on here? Girl, thank you for all the information. Clara. On um, all the information the other day, you are so helpful. I see you have a workshop coming up, girl, and so do I. I got one coming up for, uh, Saturday as well. I think you're doing one Saturday too. You know what they say. What is it? Great minds work together. So this young lady that's joining us tonight, she's out in Texas. She does furniture art like myself, very like-minded. I did not get all of my products loaded, by the way. Ooh, mercy. I don't know. <laughs> A bunch of other stuff, though. You'll be proud of me. I got a lot of YouTube videos. Yes, this Saturday. Me too, girl. Me too, this Saturday. 
and I'm doing mine at um, Habitat for Humanity, you know, because I kind of went in with Habitat for Humanity, and we are kind of working together. So I'm putting on, this is the drop cloth, um, the color that you're seeing me put on. Look at the difference. I, I think you may can see the difference um, on this video. I'm not sure. Ooh, hang on. Sorry. If you can see the difference in this video, the color, the color difference here, and I don't know if I'm... Um, you if that helps any but this is the fluff I call it the farmhouse white and this is oh thank you you are so kind and this is our um, drop cloth now I had some very well loved drop cloth in my workshop and it was getting thick on me in fact one half of my drop cloth in the can was solid and stuck to the container and the other half was soft so I salvaged what I could out of it, and, um, and that's what I'm using tonight. No need to throw your paint out. I mean, if you add water to it, you can bring it back to life, and that's exactly what I did. And you can see it's just buttery. It's almost like the buttercream. It's just super smooth. I did strain it, though, just to make sure that I didn't have any chunks in it. So um, you can strain uh, your paint a little bit if you think it's getting a little bit on the chunky side. So you see my... Um, Yes, I love, this is the drop cloth and sea glass, hun, that I'm using here. And you see I got me some wood you bend on here. So this embellishments was not on this vintage piece. I did apply them and um, myself. So that's the wood you bend on there. And I'm using a chip brush because I just got done using my oval medium with my sea glass. So now I'm having to come in here with a little chip brush but that's okay because you know what it snowed here and um, it's cold outside and uh, I did come in and I painted up on here so what I'm doing is when I go to distress this piece you're gonna see a little bit of this this um, fluff come out I call it the farmhouse white you're gonna see a little bit of that peeping through when I start distressing so um, that's why I'm kind of getting me a couple of layers of color on here. In fact, underneath this sea glass is the uh, Dixie Belle blue. So when I go coming in here to do some distressing, there's going to be a different tones of blue popping out of this as well. So if you're looking to get some color pop to um, come out of your pieces, and yes, you can see I've got the mirror over here that we just finished painting. Clara, that's what we had here that um, we were painting prior to you coming on with us, hon. So, um, are you doing a basic class um, at your workshop Saturday? The lovely thing about your um, chip brushes is they do shed. But that's okay because I just pick it back out. And like I said, what I love best about if you have a really light touch, I used to paint everything with a chip brush, everything. And I would have people come up and ask me if I spray painted it. And I'm like, no. And they're like, I don't see any brush strokes. Just back off of your paint when you're painting. Back off your pressure on your, um, on your brush and it will just take those strokes away. And then with Dixie Belle being such a wonderful paint product that it has that self-leveling and it just kind of self-fills any, uh, any and all of those little, um, little brush strokes, which is wonderful. Now, um, when I come back in, obviously I'm gonna hit my Would You Bin and I'm gonna make this kind of pop out of the park. Most likely I'll come in and dry brush it, maybe even add some different gilding waxes to it. Um, as I go along, I kind of let the piece, uh, kind of like um, my friend that's on here does, we kind of just kind of let the piece, piece speak to us as we go along. I don't push her into being anything she doesn't want to be, but I want to give her all the beauty um, that she can be. And um, rec rescuing this piece and bringing her back into a um, well-loved vintage piece. Now, she was sort of cast away. Um, she was, if you will, unwanted, and, and I got a hold of her, and I can just see the beauty 
in these vintage pieces. They're so solid. They're all dovetail drawers. The bones on these pieces are phenomenal compared to furniture today. They, they really are. They are just have so much character and wonderful bones and built with such quality and craftsmanship that you just can't hardly find that today. Just can't hardly find it. And so when I find something, I don't know, I could have been born in this time of year, in the year that these pieces were born, because I would have loved sitting at one of these vanities and preparing it every day, getting your hair done and, um, you know, just getting ready to go out with your day with all of the very modest um, clothing and stuff that they wore back in the day. It just, to me, that just kind of speaks elegance. You know, everybody's a little bit different, but to me, these just seem very elegant. And that's what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to bring her back into an elegant vanity that will be loved for many years to come. So, yes, mine's a basic class, too, um, up at Habitat. Although I am jumping in and doing a boot camp, I'm doing a three-day boot camp. I think it's three days. Yes, I think it's three days at um, Habitat for Humanity next month. So get ready, we are going to, oh thank you, you are so sweet. Thank you for coming on with me tonight. So um, this piece, remember we had talked, some of you that were with us prior, the top of this piece looked like somebody had set a bunch of wet soap on the top of this piece. And um, when they did, it just kind of felt like it was bubbled a little bit, but believe it or not, when I come in here, I sanded this with 60 grit sandpaper by hand, not with a sander. Sometimes a sander can do more damage than I want it to do. It will get in there and create some, some um, what do I want to say, some scratches and stuff that it just makes it harder for me to work on them. Whereas if I sand it by hand, I can feel how it's going to turn out. And remember, guys, I always say, if you can feel it with your hand, you're going to see it with your eye. So if you can't feel it with your fingers, you're not going to see it. So that's what you got to kind of keep in mind when you're working with this. Also, remember, you're working with Dixie Belle chalk paint, which is a very self-leveling paint. And down in some of those imperfections. Now, I do try to make sure my pieces are good solid bones, so I will fix a piece if it's a structural image problem. But if it's a minor imperfection, it's not too bad. Like, I know you guys may can see this little spot right here. I'm going to put on this because it's not structural. It's just barely right there. I can kind of, you can kind of probably see it on camera. And all you need to get is some Gorilla Wood Glue and put it in those little cracks and clamp it down and let it cure overnight and she will be solid as a rock and good and because it's not in a structural area you don't have to worry about peeling it all off it's just a slight imperfection right here and you can kind of see it and i'm sure it was because it was a water where water had gotten on it and now it just kind of bubbled a little so all you got to do is go in there. I mean, you could rip it off, but there's no need to. You can just go in there with your glue, fill it, clamp it, and let it be that, and then come back in and continue to work. So even though I'm not necessarily going to do this, but I'm going to do it on, on um, live so you guys can kind of see right here what I mean about dry brushing. I may leave it this way, but most likely I won't. You can tell I've taken off most of the paint of this brush. So when you dry brush, I always kind of hold, you can use a chippy brush, it's okay. I kind of hold it off to the side and just kind of rake it. And this is gonna show you, and I might have to pull this out so you guys can see it a little bit more. Let me just kind of pull you in. Sorry if I bobble you. Oh, and I am, and I apologize. It's my camera. I just wanna get you in here. So you're not gonna see me so much, but maybe you can see how this is doing. And I'm just gonna, you see, I'm not getting it on my main piece. I'm just hitting my would you bend. And I hope you guys can kind of see that. Let me see if I can get you a little closer. And um, we got snow today, you guys. So I've got a little heater running behind me here cause it is cold. It's mm, 
in the 50s in my garage, but it's in the 30s outside. So let me just drag you on in here. This is like a better visual. So um, my brush is not got a lot of paint on it. You can see it's the old, it's chippy brush. It looks like it's been well loved. Look at this. It's okay. I mean, use what you got. You don't have to rush out and get any kind of anything special if you're just doing it for the first time. And I'm just going to show you. I'm not leave it like this, but I want to show you some dry brush. This is what I call dry brushing. This is a dry brush technique. You're just kind of coming in. And you're getting some of that paint off of that on to your embellishment. Now, don't be afraid to take your Dixie Mud and create the same embellishment with a stencil. But all you have to do is put your stencil here. And, of course, I wouldn't have it on and build your Dixie Mud up. Let it dry in between coats and build it to this level. You don't even really need it this this thick. But anyway, I'm just going to show you. If you don't like it, you can change things up again. So if you wanted to vintage this out, I can put this on here. Look at this dry brush. This is just a dry brush effect. I'm not getting it anywhere else on my piece, just on my embellishments. Then you can come in here afterwards, work you some glaze or some wax down in here. And um, you can really get it to, you know, just kind of pop. It's really your preference. But you can, that's how I get a dry brush effect. And look how that just kind of makes the embellishment sort of pop. It kind of just looks like it's there. And um, this is what you do to kind of make it stand out. So it's meant to be an embellishment. The Would You Bend, I did apply that Would You Bend with our... Um, Gorilla Wood Glue, guys. That's how I got it on here. And I let it sit and I let it dry. That's what's underneath. That's how it's attached because it is not original to the piece. But look how cool it makes it look. Now you guys know that's wet. So I'm going to just kind of push that back in here because I did do this middle spot. And you can always pull your drawers out. In fact, I will so you guys can kind of see the bones of this piece a little bit as well. So I'm just coming in here, getting a little bit of this. Here, my dog. So I'm just putting a little bit of our, she's digging, you hear? Her? She's, she's had separation anxieties from her mama, my little girl. She's like, oh my. My mommy's left me. It's cold outside, so we bring her in. It's snowing out there, so she's inside. So I'm gonna put this back in place, because I got in there. So I just wanted to show you guys how I get that on there. I don't know what time it is, but I know, um, I'll talk to you soon, hon. I know you're getting ready to go live. I know it's probably, um, what is it? It's probably getting near nine o'clock. And I'm going off because I know you guys want to follow her. So um, I'm going to jump off of here. And I'm going to thank all of you. And thank you, Claire, for bringing your friends and, um, and acquaintances on board with me tonight. Um, we will be watching for you. And we will, vice versa, do the same for you. Have a great workshop, hon. I know you'll do wonderful. And I know you'll have a blast. And I'm going to say good night. And we will see you guys later. Thank you so much for joining us. Jump on our YouTube page. That's where we have a lot of our um, video tutorials, so you can follow us there as well. Bye for now, guys. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.